Good evening, YouTube friends. Duty Ron back here again with another video. Tonight, I am reporting to you live from my kitchen studio where you guys are normally used to seeing me from. I have my whole setup here. So if you like all things about current crime from a New York City police detective, I am Duty Ron, retired New York City police detective. I will bring you the information straight from my mouth to your living room or home so please hit the subscribe uh, button hit your notification bells if you want to get notifications on all things duty run tonight we're going to talk about jeffrey epstein post autopsy results we're going to talk about what the new york city medical examiner has to say um and we're going to get into it all right now guys i appreciate each and every one of you's coming into the live premiere broadcast that I do, the uploads. Uh, they aren't actually broadcast, but the premiere uploads. I appreciate all the interaction, the comments, the emails, the questions, the um, uh, interaction on social media, all are outstanding. So kudos to you guys. Thank you so much for doing that. These are different times for me. It's a different kind of um, it's a different kind of content creation for me, and I am listening to all of your um, all of your ideas and questions that you send to me. Um, I'm doing raw uploads, no editing. I want to bring to you guys the things that you're used to seeing from me because I never did uploads in the past. So again, we're going to talk about Jeffrey Epstein. He uh, was found a week ago uh, this morning, 6.30, I think, 6, 6.30 a.m., uh, New York Eastern Time, last week, seven days ago, hung in his jail cell, not in solitary confinement. We were all questioning why he was lifted off solitary confinement. I spoke to you guys about the, the actual procedures, how it goes in the federal uh, lockup, Manhattan Correctional Center, federal lockup a, a psychologist has to approve the prisoner the inmate off of suicide watch she approved that the warden at the time signed off on it he was taken off of suicide watch and then within a, a 10 day period he took his own life now i value what everyone's opinions are in regards to him uh taking his own life a lot of you think he was uh, set up killed murdered uh, drugged, all of the above. Um, but I have to tell you, as a 20-year retired New York City police detective, 20-plus years I've been going to all the different boroughs. Uh, there's five boroughs in New York City, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Staten Island, uh, Queens, and uh, the Bronx. I've witnessed autopsies in all of those boroughs, and each and every borough has professional medical examiners and I got to tell you New York City in Manhattan where this uh, autopsy that was the chief medical examiner's office the main office uh, they have the best of the best best there there's a forensics lab there is DNA specialists um, everything is top-notch there so if a medical examiner deems the cause of death to be by suicide of hanging I feel and this is just me this doesn't mean that you guys have to agree with it. I am okay with that. I believe it. I know that there's no massive cover-up that goes on at the chief medical examiner's office. They see so much volume. You guys, people who are in remote areas, the Midwest, please listen to me. The amount of homicides and the amount of murders that these medical examiners, the autopsies, the volume of autopsies that they conduct these are the best of the best. These guys and girls know what they're doing. So if he was suffocated or choked out, this would have came out on the autopsy. If there was a struggle, if he fought somebody off, if he scratched somebody off, if he had bruising anywhere about his body, uh, it's a thorough exam. It's a thorough, thorough autopsy that's conducted. So I feel very comfortable in saying he was, he definitely took his own life and hung himself. But that is, uh, that is my opinion. And it, it doesn't mean that you have to agree with it. Um, so thank you to everyone who is coming in. Thank you for everyone who gives Super Chat, my Patreon supporters, 
follow me here at duty ron i think it's right here somewhere i think it's right there duty ron at duty ron on all social media hit the notification bell subscribe anyone that wants to support me without giving super chat or doing anything like that you can shop on my amazon affiliate link and you can also um, just leave comments and interact with me uh, in the comment section below or through email. DutyRon at AOL. Also go to DutyRon.com. So guys, I'm going to talk to you about something a little bit outside of the realm of uh, Jeffrey Epstein. I feel that it's time to start speaking about the co-conspirators in this case. Okay, we know that there's many, there's many co-conspirators uh, going from possible former presidents to current presidents to everything in between. But this Maxwell woman, just Jocelyn or whatever, I know I'm messing up her name. She is the main focus. If I'm going and doing this case, if I'm going after the people, I go in a pecking order of who's most important. And this madam who secured these underage young girls that he had a, a, a new supply of all of these young underage girls, she was instrumental in putting that all together. And I would be going after her butt big time right now. I would want her sooner than later put in handcuffs and in jail. And I think she knows that she's next. Um, uh, I don't know where she is. There's speculation that she's hiding out at a mansion in New England. I'm going to play a quick uh, two-minute video so you guys can listen to this. Uh, it's a report that was just from a couple of days ago about this woman, and she is just as bad, if not worse, because the rumors are, sw are swarming that she was actually partaking in sexual activity with these young underage girls as well. Now, that puts a whole new twist onto this case. So let me, as I speak to you, cue up what I want you guys to see. And we're going to do this just like we do in our lives. I'm going to let you listen to a little bit of the audio from a report. Um, and here we go. I'm going to put on a new scene for you guys, and we're going to play the tape. So let's let this go. Well, everyone's looking for her. She has kept a low profile since Jeffrey Epstein's death. Meg Oliver's in Manchester by the Sea, Massachusetts, where neighbors tell us that Ghislaine Maxwell has been spotted. Meg, what are you hearing? Gal, good morning. We have confirmed with property managers near the mansion that Ghislaine Maxwell recently lived in this secluded mansion going by G or G Max. She's now at the center of an alleged sexual abuse ring and the microscope is also on this town. Manchester by the Sea is a picturesque small New England beach town, but now it's in the spotlight for who may be hiding out here. This is the more than $3 million mansion where CBS News has learned British socialite Ghislaine Maxwell has recently been staying amid accusations she oversaw Jeffrey Epstein's alleged sex trafficking ring. Early Wednesday, a civil lawsuit was filed against Epstein's estate in Maxwell. In it, a woman named Jennifer Arose alleged when she was 14 years old, Epstein committed repeated sexual assault and battery upon her. She also alleged Maxwell participated with and assisted Epstein in maintaining and protecting his sex trafficking ring, ensuring that approximately three girls... Let's look at this real quick, this statement. Maxwell participated with and assisted Epstein in maintaining and protect, uh, protecting his sex trafficking ring, ensuring that there was approximately three girls a day that they were made available to him. It's disgusting. So it says right up here in clear, in black and white, Maxwell participated with and assisted Epstein in maintaining and protect, protecting his sex trafficking ring. Co-conspirator. This is a co-conspirator that I want to go after and arrest immediately. Okay? She is just as bad as him. Just as bad, if not worse. The day worse. were made available to him. Ghislaine Maxwell has a great deal to be worried about right now. CBS News legal analyst. She has an awful lot to worry about 
because the Southern District is prosecuting. Let's not forget, this is the premier law enforcement source, the Southern District. They're prosecuting this case, and they're going to be going after her with vigor. Analyst Ricky Kleeman says now that Jeffrey Epstein is dead, Maxwell may become the focus. She has to be concerned that there may be a criminal case coming down the pike. Maxwell has mostly avoided the public eye in recent years, but in the past, she's rubbed shoulders with the wealthy and elite. DailyMail.com obtained these photos reportedly showing tech CEO Scott Borgerson walking Maxwell's dog. He owns the mansion where she may be staying. When we spoke to him, he told us she's certainly not in his house, but he did admit they are friends. There are rumors all over the place about Ghislaine Maxwell. The truth is we do not know her status. Perhaps the government does, but the rest of us don't. The property managers we spoke to said Borgerson and Maxwell were a couple and they saw them running together every morning. Maxwell has not been charged with any crime and recently has denied any allegations against her. Anthony. Okay, Meg, thank you. I'm Jamie Yukas, a massive right, police guys. presence so, in Portland. Or that's the situation from, um, from New Hampshire. Now, I feel that... I feel personally that she's outside the country. She uh, is a millionaire. Uh, she's a multimillionaire. She, of course, is not as rich as Epstein was. But she, I feel strongly that she is outside of the country because she uh, has access to private uh, planes. I don't think she's uh, inside the country. I hope I'm wrong. That's my speculation. I feel that she fled the United States. Nobody knows where she is. Nobody knows where she is. As far as I know, um, there's no conversation about where she is other than this news story that says that she's perhaps hiding out at that mansion in New Hampshire. Do you know that if she was there, that place would be under 24 hour surveillance by the feds and she wouldn't be able to move about freely? But again, uh, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about uh, this Maxwell uh, woman, uh, Justine or whatever, however her name is pronounced. She is um, just as bad as him as a pedophile goes. If she was having sexual relations with these girls, that just makes it even worse. And I have a feeling that she was. Um, my gut instinct says that she was just as uh, deviant and perverted as he uh, was because she was facilitating all of this activities. So um, it, it, I'm sure she partaked in it. Now, we have a long, dirty laundry list of people who could possibly be going down. And you know what? I don't even care about that laundry list. I want her in custody. If I'm in charge of this case or if I'm working for the feds, I am going after her and getting her in handcuffs because she's next on the list. All of the other politicians, if they put... put partaked in uh, parties and were at and confirmed and there's evidence that can point to it they need to go down too but she is number one my number one target um I, I wouldn't waste any time without putting her in handcuffs and and i think that that's forthcoming and and i wouldn't even be surprised if you know i don't like to speak about this but i i wouldn't be surprised if she takes her own life or as we all as, as a lot of people think, she gets knocked off, as some people think, what happened to Jeffrey Epstein. I, I, don't, I don't, it wouldn't surprise me if the same fate um, came upon her or she would take her own life. Because I do believe that he took his own life. Um, so I don't, I don't think he was killed. Um, but that is my opinion. Okay, here is... Uh, a, a report about the autopsy. I want you guys to hear this real quick. This is just a, a, a two second video. It's not long. I want you guys to hear this. Dozens of women over the years have claimed Epstein forced them to have sex with him and or his friends. Michelle Licata says she is one of the victims. Once something like this happens, it lives on with you forever. 
Since Epstein died six days ago, several alleged victims have filed civil suits against his estate. We're still waiting for more information on his will, but some estimates put the value of what he left behind in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Margaret. Don. All right, so, you know, that that's again, okay, hundreds of millions of dollars. His estate is valued at over $500 million. I think every ounce of that money should go to the victims, obviously. Um, uh, having a day in court and getting compensated for the abuse that you had to go through are two different things, and I get it. But uh, at the end of the day, even if he was alive and was would testified in court or his lawyer spoke for him, these victims still want to be compensated for the torture that they had to go through with this guy. And I think that they will get that. And I pray that they get that um, because we're always thinking about the victims. So guys, again, let me know if you like this format that we're using, uh, unedited strictly just like a live on a upload and a premiere i'm hoping that you guys enjoy this type of uh duty ron content it's just a short period of time that i have to do it this way and i think this is the next best thing also another footnote follow me on periscope it's the it's a twitter app at duty ron all my social media is at duty ron twitter instagram facebook uh snapchat um and here on youtube hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell down here somewhere thank you to all my super chatters one last audio i'll leave this on bernard kerrick former new york city police commissioner he was the commissioner of corrections this is an audio file and it's not crisp and clear and I'll try to play it the best I can um, for you to listen to. But he basically talked about Jeffrey Epstein and how uh, it would have never happened on his watch. He did, um, I think, 18 months or maybe, don't quote me on it. He did a, a, a decent amount of time in federal jail. He was in the same pod that Jeffrey Epstein was in when he killed himself. So he talks about that. He went to jail because he falsified documents and made some uh, he he committed some crimes federal crimes uh he was a dis he got arrested and went to jail a disgraced uh police commissioner but he was a hell of a um, hell of a cops cop he was the top cop in new york city uh, police commissioner during september 11th and this is bernard kerrick interview with um our news reporter about jeffrey epstein so hopefully you guys can hear this good okay Okay, here we go. Hold on. Um, when you... Yes. Here now, Bernard Carrick, former police commissioner of New York City. I don't, there's no one else who has that story. I mean, what a unique story your life is, sir. It's not a story I wanted, but uh, I happen to be there. I, I hear you. Um, when you listen, when you think of him in that cell, which you spent time in, on that hall, um, he didn't have any way out. You saw light at the end of the tunnel. You, you uh, know, honestly, Martha, I was actually held there as a state witness. That's right. I, I wasn't charged you know, specifically to be in that facility. I had come from a minimum security camp, uh, but I was placed in solitary confinement in Nine South, same way that he was in. Um, and I can tell you, this is a guy that was worth hundreds of millions of dollars. He's looking at a pedophile sex crimes case that is going to put him away for 45 years to life. Yes. Um, he's now been secluded to an 8 by 15 foot cell, a concrete cell that has a bunk bed, uh, no bars, no windows, no nothing. And uh, that's pretty much going to be his life for the rest of his life. So I talked about this in a prior video. Somebody of his stature, the way he lived with the luxuries, is now taken and did a complete turnaround to a flip of not having all the luxuries, not being able to do what he wants to do, not being able to be in control. This is enough mind games that could put you in, unfortunately, a bad state where you'd want to take your own life. And this guy went from high luxury to cockroaches, water bugs, feces, smell of urine, cursing, screaming, yelling, threats, you know, 
there's a report that he hired his attorneys to come in for eight or nine hours a day while he's in the Manhattan federal uh, jail just to sit in the interview room to keep him occupied so he didn't have to hear all the screaming the yelling and all the stuff that went on so he paid attorneys to come not even to consult with him and just sit in a room and i heard that the the last day he was alive he had a female attorney that looked like very young and very pretty sit for eight hours with him in a locked room to consult him to do consulting with him but she didn't even bring any files in there like this is just some oddities that went on with him and he bought he hired his attorneys to come in a team of them every day for eight hours to occupy his time so he would get out of the cell and sit in the room with them and be able to be free in a bigger room an interview room but they bought all the commissary stuff all of the uh stuff from the vending machines and handed it out to the inmates and he even put money on another inmate's account to get in the good graces with the inmates so he wouldn't get himself hurt. These are the things that rich people try to do. They try to buy people. They, he tried to buy his own safety. So this is a sad thing, a uh, sad state of affairs for this guy, what he was doing. And he, but he was still thinking. He was thinking, I could buy safety. I can buy friendship with these people, with the inmates. All right, let's finish Bernie Kerrick. Uh, so he had to make a decision. Do I live with this and stay here, or do I put an end to it? And he chose to put an end to it. Yeah. And, and as I heard you say earlier, I mean, you, you can figure out a way. If you really want to end it, you know, there's not a lot to work with in uh, there. You know, I, I've heard a number of people over the last few days, you know, it's impossible. No, it's not. I ran the largest jail system in this country, Rikers Island, for six years. I promise. So he, he ran the largest jail, Rikers Island, for six years. He was the commissioner of the of the Department of Corrections before he became the police commissioner. So he's going to talk about how easy it is for an inmate to kill himself while in jail, even in Rikers Island. With 100, 133,000 inmates a year that went through our system, if they want to do it, they can do it. So what do you think could have happened here? Because there, there's a CBS report tonight that says that the people who were watching him falsified some of their reports about how often they were checking on him. Uh, and we floated, you know, one of the theories out there. I mean, is it possible that somebody paid off somebody and said, you know what, just don't pay attention to him for a few hours tonight? Well, look, that's always possible uh, in, in any circumstance. But the bottom line is, and I think the attorney general knows this already, I think he has access. There's, there's tapes in that corridor between the two walls, between the two cells, there's tapes, there's video uh, that would be captured on the north side and south side of that hallway. That's going to tell you anybody that was in the hallway, how many times those bed sheds were made, anybody that went into the cell, anybody that came out of the cell, any movement in that corridor, those cameras are going to grab. So I'm sure on Sunday morning when the attorney general was outraged the next day, he already knew, he had a basic idea that there were problems. And, and I'm going I'm to be clear, the BOP is an agency nationwide. Bureau of Prisons. Is, you know, there's a lot of mismanagement. A lot of things. That Saying the Bureau of Prisons. The BOP, and I think this is an opportunity for this attorney general to start in FCC in lower Manhattan and make those changes. All right, so those are two different things. You know, you've got mismanagement, which could lead to, you know, people working long hours and maybe people saying, yeah, I checked on Jeffrey Epstein. And then there's the other side of it, which is the possibility that somebody may have helped to buy him some time in order to do this. Do you think that's, you know, how real a possibility do you think that is? You know, Martha, buying the time piece, um, you know, to apply a ligature, to create it, apply it, and be dead. It's about 10 minutes. Those are 15 minute to 30 minute bed checks, depending on the direction, the order from the command. Um, you know, when you do a bed check, you have to physically look in that cell. You have to see a body. And you have to see if that body's breathing. Um, it doesn't take long for you to end your life. If you want to do it, you can do it within 8 to 10 minutes. Bernard Carrick, thank you very much. Good to see you tonight. Thank Thanks you. for coming in. Okay, so that was Bernard Carrick. Uh, former New York City Police Commissioner, former Correction Commissioner, saying how easy it is to uh, take your life if you want to take your life in prison. All right, that's my 25-minute. That's my 25-minute um, timer. Uh, I wanted to just keep it be under under 30 minutes. So, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, Jeffrey Epstein 
I move forward on this case. I feel that this Maxwell woman needs to be arrested. Let me know what you think. Uh, tell me if you think I'm wrong. Uh, I'm open to any conversation that you guys want to have. Leave me messages in the comments. There's my you police sign, courtesy of Matty Boy. I want to thank Joey Brooklyn. I want to thank Winky Whispers, Black Rose, uh, Meglo, all of my Patreon supporters. There's many of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who shops on my Amazon affiliate link. And thank you to all of my Duty Ron family. All of you guys are instrumental in keeping this channel going. So your support, your friendship, your kind words, your sharing. Please remember to share the video on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on all of your social media. Share it out. Get the message out. And we will grow. We're going to hit the 10,000 mark before November. So when we do hit the 10,000 subscriber mark, I will be doing some giveaways and giving out some good prizes to people and doing some interesting stuff. So look for a 10,000 subscriber extravaganza. And I want to say thank you to everyone who sent me cards and messages about my mom. Again, it's in the past, uh, recent past, uh, in May, she passed away. So we're just a couple of months, away, you know, from that. And I thank you guys for all your kind words. They're so, so, so appreciated. Again, from my house to yours, Duty Ron, sending love and respect. Thank you for hitting the thumbs up, subscribing, and watching my videos. Make sure you watch them and let the commercials roll. It's another way for you to support this community. Much love and respect from me to you, and I will talk to you guys on the next live. Duty Ron, peace, good, good night, and enjoy the rest of your weekend.